My name is Iruka Okeke. I'm a professor at the University of Ibadan in Nigeria, and I'm really honored to have won the Peter Wilde Prize this year. Uh, I'll be talking about how uh, work that um, ensures inclusion of people who would not normally uh, make a headway in microbiology actually increases creativity in our field. Microbiology, like most of the sciences, is really an old boys club. And I've always been a little surprised that I'm in it. Um, I'm an African woman. Uh, even in Africa, there are fewer women who are doing science, and in microbiology included. And so at every stage in my career, it's really been, I've had enormous opportunities that have allowed me to do the things that I was interested in, but not very many people like me were doing. Later on in my career, I became an assistant professor at a small liberal arts college in America. These are called, um, uh, these are undergraduate colleges that provide an excellent undergraduate education, and many of them, including the one I was at called Haverford College, are research active. And Harvard College really had a, a, a philosophy of teaching through research. While I was there, I was able to really work at learning how to teach through research. And because our students were undergraduates, most of them were not committed to microbiology or even science. And so it was part of my job to keep them engaged while they were in science. And I thought at the beginning that you know, an, an enormous amount of resource would be used for this that wouldn't necessarily give back. I thought that what I was going to gain was the opportunities that these people had in science. And I did get that. But more than that, I found that they, the students that I was working with were bringing things to my science that I wouldn't have been able to bring myself, just because they haven't been taught to think the way we've been taught to think in microbiology. So they're likely to bring new ways of thinking. And this then means that they can answer questions in different ways and even help us when we hit dead ends in our field. So that was the first thing that really brought me uh, to the thought that having people who don't have the foundation that we value in microbiology is actually useful to our field. I've had a lot of wonderful experiences working with undergrads because their foundation is not microbiology. Typically they've had little if any microbiology in high school and very little in university. And so they will often come thinking in very different ways and bring an enormous amount of creativity to what I do. But it's not just uh, people inside microbiology and people who are pre-microbiology like uh, undergrads. We also have a situation, certainly in my field, where we work with bacteria that cause infections. Um, until a generation ago, almost every microbiologist that worked on bacteria that cause infections could trace a, a, an ancestral tree to Robert Cook in Germany. They were either, well, nobody a generation ago was trained by Robert Koch, but they were trained by, trained by, trained by Robert Koch. And uh, in bacterial pathogenesis, which is a subfield in which I also do research, many of us were either trained by Stanley Falco, the late Stanley Falco, who was a, a professor in Stanford, at Stanford for many years, or trained by people who were trained by Stanley Falco, or trained by people who were trained by, trained by Stanley Falco. And this is amazing. I mean, his legacy is amazing. He was an enormously creative scientist. But when you bring into a bacterial pathogenesis lab someone who cannot trace their ancestry to either Robert Koch or Stanley Falco, then you bring in a new way of thinking. So I'm really fortunate in the last almost a decade now, I've been working at the University of Ibadan in Nigeria. Uh, not many Nigerian scientists have the opportunity to go abroad and not many foreign scientists work in Nigeria. And so we have a whole microbiology community which doesn't, is not really enriched by people who are trained by those lineages. And so very often amongst colleagues or collaborators in Nigeria or in other African countries, I'll see new ways of thinking because they haven't had the privilege of being trained by trained by Robert Koch but also because they haven't necessarily been shaped in that way of thinking. And so they're more likely to think in other ways. So I think that when we give people opportunities to work with us, very often they teach us uh, more than we can learn. Uh, a third example I can give you is that um, now, more recently uh, in my lab, we've started doing some drug discovery work. And this involves working with chemists. I did quite a bit of chemistry as an undergrad. I actually came from a pharmacy background, 
but I do, do not know enough chemistry to do drug discovery on my own. And so that collaborative uh, um, um, relationship where you're working with somebody who has a completely different foundation than you do, they don't understand what you're doing completely, you don't understand what they're doing completely, but together you can create things that don't, it didn't exist before then. I think it is true that we're becoming more collaborative right now. Part of it is that we want to do more and um, you know, there's a lot of competitiveness in every field and not just microbiology. And so when you start looking in different directions, there's a chance that you're going to bump into somebody who's very different from you. So I think this is a really nice time to be doing microbiology. I think a lot of fields now are sort of at the margins of microbiology peeping in. Um, microbial genomics is one example. Um, three generations ago, genomics was all about sequencing the human genome. Of course, we got there by, first of all, sequencing microbial genomes. But now, microbial genomics, pathogen genomics, has just taken off in completely uh, um, different and, to me, more exciting directions than human genomics is going right now. Chemistry is another example, and drug discovery, and so on. So I think we are at a point where uh, collaboration is, is more common and is also yielding more. And so we're also at a point where there are many people who know how to do this. Uh, a lot of what I'm going to be talking about during my talk is not necessarily stuff that I created, but stuff that I learned from other people and have been able to apply in my group. I think it's very important for uh, those of us who are scientists and microbiologists to be brave about who we let into our labs and what we let them do. Uh, young scientists often think that, well, if they did a PhD in microbiology, they really need to do a postdoc in microbiology. And I don't think that's the case. I think if you did a PhD in microbiology and a postdoc in biochemistry, you could come out doing something really different that neither your biochemistry or your microbiology uh, advisor could conceive. And in the same vein, if you're a senior scientist, you know, if you took in somebody who was a cell biologist, a chemist, a mathematician, I can just imagine your work going in very, very different con uh, directions than you yourself could have imagined. So I think we want to be bold, not just about the topics that we put forward, but also about the people that we let into, into our groups and our spaces. To have won the Peter Wilde Prize just felt amazing. I, I was not expecting to win it. I thought um, Lindsay Hall and, and Gordon Dugan, who had nominated me, were really uh, uh, pushing things a stretch. I'd looked at previous winners and I didn't feel they were in my league. So it was a huge surprise and it's a big honor.